We are called to be filled with the sense of who we are. Now, this fullness is not a prideful consciousness of how gifts like intelligence and appearance or physical strength sets us apart from others. Mm -mm. It is not either the awareness that we are generous and sensitive and intent upon deepening our relationship with God. Rather, this fullness, this awareness of who we are is the humble recognition that our preciousness has little to do with ourselves and everything to do with our essence. It was realizing this truth that gave birth to the spontaneous Magnificat of Mary. My soul proclaims the goodness of God because God has looked upon my loneliness. When we are one with the oneness of God within, we are really free to set aside our own needs. And then we are free to recognize and respond to the needs of others. When we are in touch with the vast sacredness we embody, then we can be at one with others, no matter our differences. Separateness would be a foreign concept because we know with an inner knowing our interconnectedness, united in the sea, cosmic, universal love of our Creator. I should like to end this topic with the story of the Rabbi's Gift by Francis Dorf. There was a famous monastery which had fallen up on very hard times. Formerly, its many buildings were filled with young monks and its big church resounded with the singing of the chant. But now it was deserted. People no longer came there to be nourished by prayer. A handful of old monks shuffled through the cloisters and praised God with heavy hearts. On the edge of the monastery woods, an old rabbi built a little hut. He would come there from time to time to fast and pray. No one ever spoke with him, but whenever he appeared, the word would be passed from monk to monk. The rabbi walks in the woods, and as long as he was there, the monks would feel sustained by his prayerful presence. One day, the abbot decided to visit the rabbi and to open his heart to him. So, after the morning Eucharist, he set out through the woods. As he approached the hut, the abbot saw the rabbi standing in the doorway, his arms outstretched in welcome. It was, it was as though he had been waiting there for some time. The two embraced like two long lost brothers. Then they stepped back and just stood there, smiling at one another, with smiles their faces could hardly contain. After a while, the rabbi motioned the abbot to enter. In the middle of the room was a wooden table with the scriptures open on it. They sat there for a moment in the presence of the book. Then the rabbi began to cry. The abbot could not contain, him, contain himself, and he began to cry too. For the first time in his life, for the first time in his life, he cried his heart out. The two men sat there like lost children, filling the hut with the sobs and wetting the wood of the table with their tears. After the tears had ceased to flow and all was quiet again, the rabbi lifted his hand. You and your brothers are serving God with heavy hearts, he said. You have come to ask a teaching of me. I will give you a teaching, but you can only repeat it once. After that, no one must ever say it aloud again. The rabbi looked straight at the abbot and said, The Messiah is among you. For a while, all was silent. Then the rabbi said, Now you must go. The abbot left without a word and without ever looking back. The next morning, the abbot called his monks together in the chapter room. He told them he had received a teaching from the rabbi who walks in the woods and that his teaching was never again to be spoken of. Then he looked at each of his brothers and said, The rabbi said that one of us is the Messiah. The monks were startled by the saying, 
What could this mean? They asked themselves. Is Brother John the Messiah? Or Father Matthew? Or Brother Thomas? Am I the Messiah? What could it mean? They were all deeply puzzled by the rabbi's teaching, but no one ever mentioned it again. As time went by, the monks began to treat one another with a very special reverence. There was a gentle, wholehearted human quality about them now, which was hard to describe, but easy to notice. They lived with one another as men who have found, finally found something, but they prayed the scriptures together as men who were always looking for something. Occasional visitors found themselves deeply moved by the life of these monks. Before long, people were coming from far and wide to be nourished by the prayer life of these monks, and young men were asking once again to become part of the community. In those days, the rabbi no longer walked in the woods. His hut had fallen into ruins. But somehow or other, the old monks who had taken his teaching to heart still felt sustained by his prayerful presence.